Hello, and welcome to the Debug Mindset, part of our TI Precision Labs microcontroller series. In this video, we will discuss the process and mindset for debugging issues within embedded systems. There are many approaches one can take to debugging embedded microcontroller issues. This Precision Lab will go through some basic concepts in order to improve your debug skills for embedded devices. By learning and utilizing these concepts, you will always have something to fall back on when faced with a tough problem. For this video, we've broken up the debug mindset into five high-level concepts. Break the problem into parts. Get to a known good state. Test and iterate. Check assumptions. And talk it out. Before we get started, let's define some terms that will be used throughout this video and subsequent videos. An embedded system is the culmination of your microcontroller, external subsystems, and software needed for your application. A subsystem is a collection of circuits and software that perform a specific functionality for the overall embedded system. An MCU, or microcontroller, is typically the heart of your system or subsystem and where hardware and software meet to do an application. A peripheral is an internal MCU component that does specific functions such as I2C communication or an RTC. A debug chain is the set hardware and software components necessary for debugging an embedded system with a computer. This includes JTAG connections, debuggers, and your code development environment. A debugger or programmer is a piece of hardware that connects a PC to our embedded system that can both program and read internal registers of the MCU. First, let's explore breaking the problem down into parts. Embedded systems are typically comprised of hardware and software working together, and it can be sometimes difficult to figure out where a problem is occurring. Software may not operate correctly if an underlying hardware problem is occurring, and vice versa. To add to this, during development of a project, one typically has external factors such as a debug chain attached to a target MCU. The debug chain typically affects operating conditions of the MCU when compared to running standalone. Now, take this example embedded system. As you can see, the MCU is interacting with different parts of the system. Each interaction can be broken up into subsystems that can allow the isolation of a potential issue. For example, let's say I'm having an issue with the results being recorded with the sensor 1 subsystem. As I start debugging, I can ignore other subsystems to focus my debugging efforts and then further break down the subsystem in question by looking into the software, the MCU peripherals, and the hardware associated with the Sensor 1 subsystem only. In this system, you could probe your sensor output, your signal chain, ADC spy lines, and finally, the results and code inside the MCU. The next high-level concept is to further isolate the problem by getting to a known good state. This can be done in several ways. From a software perspective, you can disable the latest features added that may have caused the issue then check what they interact with. You can also disable routines that don't pertain to the subsystem you are currently looking at. This can eliminate potential interference or misleading debug paths. You can also explore rebuilding your subsystem code from scratch by utilizing manufacturer-provided known good MCU code examples. You can then slowly add in more advanced features from your original code base to find issues. From a hardware perspective, you can use those same code examples to ensure your hardware is performing correctly. You can also check out a known good board as a reference, especially if your board is modified. If you suspect a bad component, replace with a new one to see if the issue is resolved. In most cases, you can start taking non-essential components off the board to isolate potential design issues. All of these techniques help build a root of trust to your design so you can always revert or compare to a known good state. This leads to our next debug concept, test and iterate. The basic premise is to test out small changes and learn system behavior from these changes in order to establish additional known good states that you can build upon and further test. Sometimes you may want to prioritize quick or trivial tests first to hasten debug efforts. Since software is a component, it can be easy to change how a system behaves and observe differences. Then, you can repeat tests with slight variations to your program by reflashing the MCU. Use your debug chain to see how your software is working 
or utilize your hardware by probing MCU pins with the scope or logic analyzer to see how the system is behaving without changing the MCU behavior. Checking assumptions is another key debug concept. Through our other concepts, we have both explicitly and implicitly made assumptions about the behavior of the system and our debug efforts. These assumptions could have included the scope of the issue being tested, its expected behaviors, and known goods that we have not explicitly tested. As you break down the problem, you may have disregarded the power subsystem and possible debugger or adjacent subsystem interference. Test these avenues and learn of their effects on your targeted subsystem. Double check that you have the correct software loaded into the MCU and trace any wires you have connecting hardware together. Ask yourself, what have I not looked at? And what can I confirm to be true? This can be a harder debug concept to fully explore as most assumptions are implicit and thus we don't realize we have made them. Getting another viewpoint of the problem can help you identify more assumptions to check. This leads us to our final debug concept, talk about your problem. When facing a difficult problem, it will often be beneficial to seek out help. Talking with a colleague about your issue and getting a different perspective can often lead to new tests or assumptions to check. Just by re-explaining your issue and your debug steps so far to someone else can also trigger new trains of thought to apply to your problem. This is the basis behind the rubber duck method of debugging. This technique, popularized by software engineers, involves teaching an inanimate object, such as a rubber duck, your code and process line by line. By forcing yourself to teach what you are doing, it forces you to better understand the problem, which can lead to further insight. This video has explored the debug concepts of breaking a problem into smaller parts, getting to known good states, testing an iteration, checking assumptions, and talking about the problem. Please keep these concepts in mind as you work through issues and you explore more specific debug techniques within the TI Precision Labs microcontroller debug curriculum.